Am I looking at you or the yeah, camera? Just at me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Matt Barr interview, take one. I was very ill, apparently, as a newborn. And my, one of my brothers said, that's all right, Mommy, we can always buy another. Because my parents were both teachers, they had every ball, bat, racket known to mankind. So our house was central activity location for the whole neighborhood. And whatever sport was in season, you played. Having two older brothers, one seven-year-older, one three-year-older, you just wanted to play. So if you wanted to play with my brother's friends, you had to be able to take a lot of abuse, which was really good practice for being a kicker. But it was a great experience growing up because you played all sports and you played to have fun. That's kind of what my parents' philosophy was, both in school and in sports. Play every sport. Do as well as you can educationally. Good things will happen. But if there was one sport that took precedence in the Barr family, it was soccer. Matt's father, Walter Barr, is recognized as a U.S. soccer legend. And in the 1950 World Cup, playing against a heavily favored Great Britain team that was considered to be the best in the world, Walter Barr assisted on the game's only goal that gave the United States a stunning 1-0 victory. It's considered to be one of the greatest upsets in World Cup soccer history and became known as the Miracle on Grass. I didn't know my dad was a world-class soccer player until my teens, probably, and I think I was at a lot of his games. He played for every national team that the United States had for 11 years. He played every minute of every game except one that he was hurt. He did it for love of the game, if you will. And that spirit between my mom and the dad, growing up with two coaches and older brothers, a younger sister, that's the spirit that you had. After a stellar career at Neshaminy High School in Philadelphia, Matt accepted a scholarship to play both soccer and football at Penn State University, joining his older brother Chris, who was already a two-sport All-American for the Nittany Lions. My dad had always advocated soccer players kicking football. I was actually recruited at the various schools to play soccer and football because they knew I wasn't going to give up one to play the other. In 1978, Matt became the second person in the Barr family to win All-American honors in both soccer and football. He was selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers in the sixth round of the 1979 draft, where he played for two seasons. And his rookie year, he helped the Steelers win their fourth Super Bowl championship. In 1981, he played four games for the San Francisco 49ers. He was released in week five of that same year and signed with the Cleveland Browns, where he played for nine years. After being released by the Browns during the 1990 preseason, Barr got a call from the New York Giants, who were looking to replace their injured kicker, Raul Allegre. Parcells called and had me try out, hit about a dozen kicks, and he said, okay. And I find out an hour later they want to sign me, and uh, that worked out pretty good. In week four of the 1990 season, Matt Barr became the Giants' permanent place kicker. And he knew exactly what it would take to meet the high demands of head coach Bill Parcells. I said to him, I, I get the feeling that as long as I make field goals, I get to stay around. And he goes, you're absolutely right. And that's the way it was. Bill Parcells wanted you to perform, period. And from the first time he stepped onto the field, Barr knew he had come to the right place. I felt a teammate of those guys, and that's one of the welcoming aspects of the Giants. I felt like a teammate on day one. I think it was the first game I was in. We get down to a last second field goal. They call a timeout. LT comes back from the huddle during the timeout. You take all the time you want. We'll keep them out of there. This is going to be a long kick for Barr, 40 yards to win it. The Giants win. And that's what a team leader does. And there were Phil Simms, Bart Oates, a lot of team leaders. And when you have team leaders on the offensive line, the defensive line, among the linebackers, the DBs, and that's a team. In addition to his skills as a kicker, 
Barr possessed a grittiness and determination that quickly earned the respect of his coach and teammates. Clutch, competitive little son of a gun with rare toughness, physically and mentally, rare. I thought I was a linebacker in a kicker's body. He was not afraid to throw his body out there and, and make a tackle. There were no excuses with him, and that was, that was an awesome thing. You want to get in a fight? He'll get in a fight. You want to make a tackle? He'll make a tackle. Could you imagine going to the sideline after a kickoff saying, hey, you know, I didn't make the tackle because I didn't want to get dinged up, I didn't want to get hurt. Are you kidding me? They would have torn your, torn your head off. Uh, and I think that's why I would jump in on tackles and try my best to get the guy down because that's what a teammate does. That's what being part of a team is, is making the team better. I was really happy to be the first kicker to get the Madden Award. And that iron giant back there, yeah, it's just, it made me feel good. I've always said first that field goals are the most team-oriented aspect in the game of football. You think about it, the defense has to win the ball. The offense has to drive the ball down into position. Then you need nine good blocks in front of you. If one person on the line misses a block, you're not making the field goal. It has to be a good snap. And Haas, I love quarterbacks as holders. Haas was a great, a great one. And mostly because it's the way they catch the ball. Quarterbacks catch the ball with soft hands under control. And the other part of it is he'd look up at you and go, just hit the ball. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, hey, we really need this, you know, you're a kicker, get it done. Hostetler will hold for Matt Barr. I held for him for years. It didn't matter, just get the ball down, I'll kick it through. And he made some, some huge kicks for us. Barr's kick is good from 34 yards. Barr connected on 17 field goals during the regular season and was the Giants' leading point scorer. Down the middle. Four seconds remain, the field goal try by Matt Barr. It's good. His accuracy and consistency helped lead the Giants to a 13-3 regular season record. And in the NFC Divisional Playoff game against the Chicago Bears, he gave the Giants an early lead and route to a 31-3 win. Barr will try from 46 yards away to put the Giants ahead. Long for him, but this one's plenty far enough. And good. And the Giants break on top. Going in there, our, our big concern, let's get by Chicago. Let's make sure we win that game where we were supposed to, we're at home. They're a good team, so don't give them a chance to get in the game. And then going out to San Francisco, hey, they're the two-time Super Bowl champs, but you don't ever go into a game. I don't ever remember going into any game thinking you're gonna lose. With no week off between the NFC title game and the Super Bowl, the winning team would have to travel directly to Tampa. And as the Giants prepared for their trip to San Francisco, Coach Bill Parcells had his players make one small change to their travel plans. I told him we were going to San Francisco, pack for two weeks because we're not coming home. We had packed a bag of clothes because if we won, we needed clothes for a week down in Tampa. In the NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers, Barr knew that the hitting would be hard and the points would come in a premium. You know that this is a low scoring game, which means it's going to be probably a field goal. And in a seesaw contest that saw four lead changes, Barr was a model of accuracy and consistency. Good, and this game is tied at three. Barr from 42 yards away. Far enough and good. And so the Giants take the lead six to three. So many individual plays made that game happen. 46 yards out. Line drive by Barr is good. He's three for three. Didn't we do a fake punt in that game, Gary Reasons? Fake punt, and it's going to work. Reasons streaking down to the inside the 25. That's the call they needed. That's the play they needed. They needed something to get him out of there. Barr would capitalize on New York's trickery, pulling the Giants to within one point with his fourth field goal of the day. 
13 12 the 49ers lead with 547 left to play with a one point lead the Niners were looking to run out the clock and the Giants were looking for a miracle and think about the play that got us the ball and the Giants have the ball. Lawrence Taylor out of the pack with the ball. And it was so many individual plays, so many things that only that person could have done. I, I keep remembering the catches by Mark. Here's Hostetler chased out of the pocket. Chased by Burt. Pass is caught by Bavaro. You're always rooting for a touchdown, but realistically, you knew it was they're just moving the ball down the field in position for the kick a field goal. And it all goes on his shoulders. You know that it's a win or lose situation. Take a deep breath, exhale, head down, follow through with the target. So the snap comes back, I hit the ball, and I said, I hit that good. And I go, uh-oh, I might have hit that too good. Sure enough, I look up and it's drifting to the left upright. And I'm going, oh, geez. And it, it straightened out, and it made it by a, a yard or two. Snap, spot, kick is away. It's got the distance. It is good, good, And the good. Giants are going to Tampa Bay. It's over for the three-peats. It's <laughs> over. When I saw all the replays of it, first, I'm glad I didn't see the sideline to have the guys holding hands on their knees and in their prayer circles. And the other thing I, I noticed was, thank goodness I did pull it a little bit because that rush, the interior guys made their normal runs. The furthest guy out there delayed a heartbeat and went sprinting across the line of scrimmage, diving through that now gap. And he was in perfect block position over probably the block point so had I hit the ball up the middle, I think there'd been a chance that he could have got a hand on it. And fortunately, he missed and we made it. <laughs> there will be no three-peat. Everyone's happy. I'm happy. We won. You know you're going to the Super Bowl. And we know we're flying right to the game. And the plane ride from there to Tampa was the most memorable trip that I've ever been on. It was such a celebration, the players so happy. And now, we have the man that iced the game. We call him Mr. Ice himself, New York Giants, Matt Barr. I am relieved because it would have been the longest plane trip of my life if Matt had not gone through. Matt, how many rings do you have? I have one ring and I'm going to get another. Thank you very much, Matt Barr. And giant football in the Super Bowl. The crowd on its feet, tens of thousands of small American flags being raised. Each year, the Super Bowl captures the full attention of sports fans across the nation. But in 1990, there were far more pressing issues that put the importance of the NFL's marquee event into perspective. The biggest sporting event on the American calendar it takes a backseat to the crisis unfolding in the Gulf. Our guys are over there fighting for our freedom. They're putting their lives in danger. These are our guys over there, and we're thinking about them. Even during the game, we're thinking about them. The players will show their support of the soldiers with the American flag on the back of the helmets that they will wear today in the Super Bowl. That's how important it was to all of us to make sure that we were showing camaraderie with the, the men and women in the field. And from the opening kickoff, Matt Barr showed that he too was ready for battle. Matt Barr to kick off, Don Smith is back to receive along with Al Edwards and Super Bowl 25 is underway in Tampa. It's Don Smith who used to play for the Buccaneers tackled by Barr. So Matt Barr who loves to refer to himself as a player and not just a kicker proves it on the opening kickoff of the Super Bowl. After forcing a three and out on Buffalo's opening drive the Giants offense methodically moved the ball down the field. Settler out of the gun, fires over the middle, caught by Ingram. Inside the 20, out of bounds at the 16. Although the drive would stall, Matt Barr would give the Giants an early lead. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt. Hostetler puts it down for Barr, last week's hero. And he picks up here where he left off at Candlestick. 
But the Bills would strike right back with their big play offense. Going deep, it's tipped, and it's caught by Lofton, who is taken out of bounds at the eight-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Don Smith and Mueller are the running backs, and Donnie Smith takes it into the end zone. It was back and forth. Players on both teams were making tremendous plays, efforts, and whatnot. And I, I remember the, the catches on third down. He's got Ingram for maybe a first down. He'll try to the 20. Yes, he's got it. The extra yard that you got on a on a running play. And look at Otis Anderson throw the uppercut. He looks like Muhammad Ali winding up, popped in with that stiff arm. A spectacular catch. Touchdown, touchdown. We needed every single play, and that includes defensively disrupting the the speed offense that Buffalo had. It was amazing what they did. It, once again, the Giants held Buffalo to under their scoring average. That's tremendous. That team was averaging, what, 35 points a game? Trailing 19-17 in the fourth quarter, the Giants would mount one last drive, setting up Matt Barr for yet another potential game-winning kick. Every kick I ever made was to win the Super Bowl. That's what you have practiced 10,000 times, was for that kick. Giants trying to take the lead on a bar field goal from 21 yards. Bar's kick is good, and New York once again has the lead. It's the fourth lead change in the game. In one of the greatest Super Bowls ever played, Buffalo would counter with a final drive of their own, putting their kicker, Scott Norwood, in position to win the game. Now Norwood tries to kick his longest ever on grass, 47 yards. The whole week, Scott was saying, I hope it comes down to a kick. Why would you want that? I, and sure enough, it did. Be careful what you wish for. Norwood is right on the tip of his range. Eight seconds to go, Giants on top. Back, back. I mean, when he kicked the ball, the minute it went over my head, I'm anticipating that it's going to be wide. In the air, stop the distance, it is. And then I heard God jump and say, he missed, he missed. No good. No good. Wide right. I don't know how high I jumped. I could have jumped into the stands. It felt like it took me forever to come down. And I just like, thank you, God. That game represented what's best about football, especially Giants football, is that everyone contributed to the win. Matt Barr played two more seasons with the New York Giants and capped off his career with stints in Philadelphia and New England. And although some may consider him a journeyman, he holds a special place in his heart for the time he spent as a New York Giant. He was clutch kicker Matt Barr. Once a Giant, always a Giant. I 100% agree with that because I really feel an affinity with a classic organization. And I think I, I had the privilege of playing on a great team.